uh, there are two components of the question. One is to the reasons as to why the government of Kiribati is deploying resources for renewable energy. And the second part is uh, uh, whether the, the, the priorities, the sequencing of uh, the government's uh, programs and projects on that. On the first part of the question, surely renewables is now the global trend to address global issues. Uh, one of those is climate change, and the other one is addressing also the challenges uh, concerning the sustainable development goals as our a clear global commitments to the, to the UN sort of global framework. And since it, this is a global issue, uh, and also affecting uh, addressing climate change as a small developing country like Kiribati, that's a great issue for us. And we sort of the, have the mandate, it's mandatory for, for us as a government and people to, to join this uh, global trend, this global action, move towards renewable, renewable re renewables I pick up at. And secondly also this is also to improve our energy security by reducing our dependency on this import uh, imported uh, fossil fuel. The cost is, is so high to Kiribati considering the, the geography and the location of Kiribati in the world, yes. Uh, we have a lot of issues on that. And he, we rely heavily on this importation of uh, fossil fuels. And so the seeking alternatives, uh, especially cheap and affordable energy, will do provide a better, a better future for our people in terms of improving their livelihoods. Uh, as you know, Kiribati, if you are familiar with the geography, there are a group of islands all spanning the equator, 33 in total. So we have a problem there in communication, in transportation. And so that's one area why we, it's important to, to opt for renewable. Se thirdly, you know, this proximity, proximity issue. The, the solar renewable energy uh, components, mainly solar and uh, ocean, as well as wind. We thought we have that abundance in great supply in Kiribati. And I think that there's a benefit to us in terms of the inputs. Since we have the inputs readily available, I think the, the cost will be much, much uh, lower. But mindful of the fact that some of the inputs uh, we may not have in terms of the technology and that, but th those are the barriers that we need to. But we thought that in terms of uh, availability of those renewable resources, uh, you know, Kiribati seems to have uh, an edge. And we want, the government wants to take the lead in eliminating or, or doing away with importing uh, costly f f diesel energy, so we thought that that uh, will provide an advantage, good advantage. And finally, yes, as I mentioned, uh, it off offers more supply choices. To get the second component of the question is in terms of priorities. Yeah, since resources are scarce, uh, sequencing of uh, any development program is a, necess a necessity for particularly for small island countries like Kiribati. So for most, it's the need to set up a, a framework, a policy framework. Not only a policy framework, but also in, in making sure that uh, the, the voice of the people are in that framework, the partnership. And so then secondly, after setting the, the policy framework, where the commitment of all stakeholders are very important to have that put in place first. And for most, then we have to, to put in the infrastructure. Uh, well, 
mindful also of the, the scattered net of, of the island. So we need the infra, infra, for infrastructure put in, in place. And yeah, thirdly, it's, uh, it's quite important to, 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 to let the people aware. Yeah, communication is important and information and sharing this, uh, especially renewable energy, which is so uh, available readily there, but uh, has not been translated into reality. So the people, uh, they know that we have the sunlight, so we are a people of the ocean, but uh, we haven't put that into reality. So they, they need to be, to have that in mind. So we need their commitment and support.